my name is JD. I'm going to take a look at the Anim Challenge Contest winner. The winner was Paul Giga, and the theme was Christmas Fail. Congratulations to the win. It's a fantastic shot. I'm going to give you my subjective point of view of things that I thought were awesome and things that I thought could be improved. Maybe take it or leave it. Those notes are always very subjective, but overall, fantastic work. Congratulations, and let's take a look at it. All right, so here we are. Let's take a look at the whole thing. And the challenge was also to do the whole animation within 11 seconds. So I have some comments in terms of pacing and timing, but you have to remember that there was an 11 second, you know, a limit. So some of my comments will be, well, that's easy to say if you have more time, but that's why I'm going to go through some of my comments that are more technical, some are more staging and timing wise. But before we do all of this, let's take a look at this just in case. And I want to refresh my memory of what is going on. It's also an awesome shot that we just should watch again. <laughs> <laughs> I like that hit at the end. <laughs> this is cool because you have the bat here, right? You got the lightsaber sound. You have the shooting, who will be her. Lightsaber. And then the bat. It's actually cool. It's a nice little detail that incorporates all of those characters. So, let's take a look. So, right off the bat, let me go with the more broader thoughts, which again... There's a time limit, so it's it's hard to do, but I have hopefully a fix or an idea how to incorporate this. So I'm gonna turn down the volume just a tad, at least for myself, and go through those moments. So we have like the the first image, this is my, my main common thing. I like that there is a color difference, right? So everything is kind of the same, obviously here, and the eye might go down. And that's the object of interest. And then as the character comes up and it comes up fast, the eye will go over there. And again, different color, a different point of interest, which is cool. That being said, my main concern about this initial staging is that the cookies are very, very low. So there is a chance that we get into the shot. I mean, we get right into him. So here's my concern. The shot starts. And we don't really have time to soak everything in. This goes straight into the character, which you might argue is fine. We don't lose any time. We look at him and he does this awesome thing with lots of smear frames and surprises, which is great. But I wonder if there's a way to establish the objective first in a, in a clear way. And since you do have camera movement, as we can see here, what if... The whole thing is staged where the cookies end up being a bit more here. So you're tilted down more at the beginning. And again, you don't have that much time, but we could finagle something in the, in the middle. But let's say there is no time limit. I will potentially reframe this and bring up the cookies here, maybe even a bit more up here. And then when this happens, we pan and tilt and go to this character. Because the character goes up. Let me see. And it jumps right there. I think it would be interesting for the energy too to then tilt up and you might have to, you might not have enough time to rest on the character. You might have to immediately follow with more pan and tilt to reframe to get into this, right? And we finish with this camera move that you have here. That's my thought for the beginning, potentially, just in terms of, of broader staging because it is, and I have my, I have my video a bit. Let's go like this here so you can see everything is there. I mean, you could be picky and saying there's also a little bit of a tangent there as as it gets very close to the edge. And as we move, this is just a bit better. Or we go into a region where it's it's really cutting it off here. So on the picky, you know, tangent point. But I think in terms of general staging, so we see what's going on. It's a bit clear. Let me bring this back down. Uh, I will personally probably bring this up here. Now, because I mentioned that we should potentially spend more time, just even if it's seven, eight frames, something like that, where we, go, where we see, oh, okay, color, cookies, that's important. Pam, this goes up. Oh, let me look up here. And that's a, a redirection and you focus change for the audience. That would be one thing. Because even if you have enough time and leave it like that, what I'm noticing is that you have all of this. And even though this has color, is so at the edge that I'm personally looking here. So when this starts right off the bat, I'm really more focused here. So again, not to labor that point, but it could be something where we want to introduce, this is the goal, this is at least an object of interest. 
and then we bring up that character over here. So that could be something. Now, you might say, sure, uh, <laughs> you want to linger on the cookies. Where do you take the time? So this would be my, my second broad point in terms of time. So let me just watch this again. You have, well, going over there, going over there, going over there. That's good there. And then this. So see, my, my thought is that everything is somewhat even. I wouldn't say that it's rhythmically really super even. So if you count it out, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. See that? I mean, it's I'm horribly counting down somewhat seconds or whatever, some form of rhythm. But you saw that a lot of the beats somewhat fell on that bum, bum, bum. And that was my main thing is that I think we could tweak the timing a bit more. So I'm a big fan of this. And I'm talking about technical things a bit later where I feel like this could be potentially a bit pushed in terms of the movements and arcs. I love that little wiggle on the hat, but I wonder if the character could come out a bit more from here. So instead of coming out, if you track the nose, he does this and stays. And maybe it could be something where it's something a bit more like that, where it comes a bit more screen left, just a tad to then settle into something like this. That would also give the head the hat, sorry, not the head, the hat move a bit more of an arc and movement. And because it travels a bit, it will land a bit more sideways and that will motivate the skew angle and the movement. But that's the technical stuff. I'm going to get into it later. So let's look at the overall timing. Like, I don't mind this. I like that. Hey, and go. That's pretty cool. But the moment we're there, I'm feeling... Okay, and comes out immediately i wish there would be something where we could linger on that also a bit more where we go and then the audience wonders you mean but what you also have is you have a camera pan and the pan doesn't stop and the character already comes out so there's no moment of something happening pause and as long as you go nothing's moving what's going to happen and right when you have that Imagine lead in of leaning in of what's going to happen. Then the character comes in and travels over. So I feel like we could milk that anticipation a bit more. And this could be something of camera traveling a bit more actively and stopping and giving us a couple frames again, five, six, seven, maybe 10 frames, even of this might be a bit long, but maybe seven frames of nothing happening and also no movement. And then the character comes out. I'm also wondering character rolls in here. I'm also hoping, hoping as a strong word, but it would be fun if that the character gets into this, the audience's eyes here, right? This is where we left off and super picky would be awesome. If those ornaments would shake, this is way too much work. It's just, I'm going to throw out some really ridiculous things that you can ignore to no end, but I like, it's only because I like animating stuff like that. I like adding little things. Um, it's just that, Never mind. Let me, let me just go back. So, as the character exits here, wouldn't it be cool if we would reveal the character somewhere else? And I know he's a bit further behind than where he landed. We go back. Yeah, right. So we're down here. And then as he comes out, let me see. Yeah, so we were down here, comes out here. But it's something where... Not that you want him to come out of, you know, in front of the tree... But you could really fast. And what would that do is that we go out here and we almost expecting the character to come up from behind that tree, but suddenly comes in from in front of the tree between the table and the tree and much faster. But what would happen technically is that you would see the face here. This is the table there, rather. Yeah. So you would only see, you know, maybe from here up, which would be funny to just play on the expression and once he gets to here and he would have to kind of travel this way so it's not straight but more like straight up left first we have the face intro with the funny expression so maybe you would be widening those eyes and making a bit more crazed and then you have an extra funny moment of once the character gets beyond that table it would reveal the fingers and that could be your extra gag and maybe that could be funny too because we would focus on the face and then we had enough of the face reveal the fingers 
and the eye is on the fingers and laughing, and because we're still on the fingers, we will see this really happening. So that's something I kind of missed. I watched this. That's funny, and then... To be honest, I even though it's very clear to have and everything, it was just the moment of, oh, that's funny, I love this, I love this. Then I started looking at everything else, it made me laugh. And then it felt more like this is a moment of the character doing this and then jumping off fingers. But doing a, a oh, let's hide behind the chair. And less of a, oh, I tripped over the book. It's very subjective. I'm sure a lot of people did miss that at all. But maybe by having a character come out here, which again would be more unexpected, and then having a face and then finger reveal, it could be a one-two punch with then the focus lingering on that moment. Could be something. Now, that being said, I'm also massively biased um, for a reason I'm going to bring into the frame here because I love that idea. It cracks me up. Why? Because I did something very similar a long time ago. A very long time ago. I'm so old. With a short that I did a long time ago. This was probably in 2003. Spring 2003, I believe. So 17 years ago. Holy macro. You probably weren't even born when I did this. Horrible to say. So my character here, it's very loud here. I'm going to turn that sound a bit lower here. So the character hides behind that wall and then does this. And I think this is probably why I'm giving you that note. Because what I was remembering is that you have that moment of the character coming in. And we are looking here. And then as the character disappears, the audience is somewhat resting here. Because... Well, you know, as it was introduced, this is somewhat of the height. If you would be standing, the head would be here. So then we come to this shot where we're expecting this is somewhat the height. And you're expecting the character to reappear here. But the fact that the character is down here, that is the added extra surprise. And I think this is why I'm reacting to that as well. Because this is your surprise number one. And then... The light shadow thingy silhouette reveals the fingers. It's actually even gag number three in a way. If you're going to be super, uh, you know, picky here. You have one and then also the fingers. Doing that little... And I think that's probably where my perspective comes from. And this is also why I love this. But I also love that it's completely unnecessary to be on fingers. Because he's not hiding. My character was trying to hide. I love that he is walking on the fingers... Still massively exposed. And with a, with a fun silhouette and showing off this, I think this is super cool. It's also interesting that it's a, a Christmas pirate, actually. Also very cool. But anyway, this is the, the general thought of potentially tweaking this for a different appearance, um, for a different gag reveal. But let's continue here. You have this. like Especially this. After this, I feel like... Everything happens very, very evenly, and there's just not enough of a surprise pause where we linger. Like, giving the audience a moment of, like, a thought of what's going to happen next. Everything happens successively where we're always being fed something new. And especially this. And I even wonder if this would be something where the character will go... And actually off-screen. Again, for a moment of nothing, and then appearing here. Which you might argue, okay, well, but then you have one disappear, two disappear, three disappear. I understand that this is also very repetitive. I think my main comment for all of this in, in terms of timing would be, what if, even if we keep this, this one, right? It's not, it's not even change and redo uh, crazy animation. Like some of my comments are very destructive. So it's just, it's just the, the thought and thinking out loud. What if we have a feel of fast, faster really fast where it could be you're doing this timing pause and then ding, 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 really fast and you might have to jettison this idea where it's just getting in there really fast and then because we're already saving time because you make this much faster right so it could be this pause and then ding, 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 and then you hold again and you wonder Okay, what's next? And then this, you might, even though this is a lot of fun, I'm not sure what that means. If this is a 
recovery from the tumble. You mean that's a tumble and he kind of recovers from that to reset himself in, with this. That could be something that could be read into this moment. But what if you take this out and it's more a, imagine a an appearance without this, right? Go straight into this and it's more of a, like a really fast move, like a snaky. And you could even do something because it's so fast and we're blocking this uh, book a lot less. You could have a fun thing of almost a wider arc and it gives us like a, a, a just a moment of, the book moving and maybe opening up halfway and some of the pages that kind of flapping and it's a very fast look here i hope that makes sense right so you have this type of timing and maybe even leave that pause or give us maybe five more frames and the camera's quiet and then really fast and then so you really have a ramp up of energy and the other reason why i'm mentioning this is that your energy goes up, 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 right? You have the jump, and then you got the finger crawl, and then you got the the jump in front of the, the camera. So it's blah, 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 really fast. But then you can hold here longer. Let's see. Or not, actually, it could actually even work. Where it's the contrast. So you have fast, 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 hold. And then the swipe, right? So I'm also looking at this where, so where can we add contrast in timing? But we got to change some of the timing, so you have to steal frame somewhere to put it somewhere else because of your 11 second uh, limit. But that was my overall thought, right? So this timing, a bit faster, even faster. And because it's so fast, it will make the contrast of him holding here that much more pronounced, if that's a word I can use there. And then you do this. And then I'm wondering, yeah, very subjective. My thought was, he's getting ready. And my thing for surprises is that I always feel like you could, it's potentially more effective to, to interrupt a surprise by, it's like, no, but it's, you want to, your surprise effect is going to be more effective if an action is being interrupted, if that makes sense. Meaning that you're doing this and then you're getting ready, but it's a very slow, uh, and even eases in at the end. But what if he takes the cookie? Do I have a cookie? I don't have a cookie. I have a little case here. So what if it's more, ha ha, and then, right, you go, and right before a surprise happens. So it's you're 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 leading the audience into a new action, and they're they're expecting a, a something to finish, a resolve, like a payoff. Like, oh, he's about to eat this, and maybe you wonder how is he going to eat this with the hook. Like, there's some other expectations you can set up. But I wonder if that would be more effective to do a, ah, and you can still do the tongue, ah, huh, right, do a little bit quickly. So whatever you want to do, and then tongue in, and then, huh, and right when that happens, it's actually not him doing this. What if in here the gun comes down, revealing the barrel of the gun, and that can make a sound? And as an audience, we're focused here. Suddenly, something out of the corner of the eye happens. And we're going, what's that? And we have the same reaction as him. What's that? And it's kind of a bit more of a, a connection with the character. And then, I mean, all you might have to do is just move her over, cheat, so that the barrel is less pointing at him. It could be a cheat where it's pointing a bit more away from him. Or scale the gun, you mean? So you don't even have to change where she is. So this could be a potentially easy uh, cheat. And then we do this. That makes sense. So that faster, still some frames, even faster. And I think those frames you would steal, those are the frames you might potentially add here. And even if you need them, maybe here where you have you know, a moment of looking and maybe not immediately panning over. So you have the nah, and then the gun comes down. And I mean, you're going to need probably a couple more frames to settle on this. On a frame of mouth open, but eyes looking this way. Gun here. And we're all going, you know, he's going and the audience is going, oh, what was that? And you want to give this maybe 10 frames. And those are maybe the frames you stole from the beginning. And then <laughs> get into that. Also, I have to say, and have this image ready. This cracked me up because this is... Obi-Wan from episode three, also from the Clone Wars, but I believe, I don't think this showed up in Attack of the Clones. I could be wrong, probably wrong, and someone can comment and, and you know, 
uh, post uh, images to disprove that. But I think, I think this pose showed up in episode three for the first time. But my connection is this, that it's in this shot. And I, I started as an intern. This was my first movie. Uh, episode three and i animated uh and plugged in mocap and keyframes all the background characters during that scene and this always cracked me up like why is he doing that that finger thing it's always a, a, a f interesting pose uh, but anyway that was uh my immediate connection with the shot has cracked me up and i really like the the setup you have a nice clean silhouette which is a nice color silhouette with this and everything's very clear um generally i would probably say maybe the dad could have a bit of a stronger line of action to get ready. Uh, you might argue, well, the dad is maybe like, maybe it's a boring dad and that's just the pose how he is. But I think, I think that could be something that could be pushed potentially, even with her, maybe, even though she's already pretty cool. He's definitely very cute. Uh, and I love all of this. And again, if you have more time, which I know there's a time limit and I don't know how long it took you to animate the whole thing, but maybe a potential, maybe breathing, breathing and him going... Like a, like a smile or like mm, I'm getting ready or something. Some keep alive and ambient movement here. I think could be kind of fun, potentially. But again, as I said, I think this is pretty cool how he incorporated the sounds. Also, maybe just to try, before we cut over two frames, maybe like a real big widening of eyes where the camera pans over. We look here, we immediately understand what's going on because the poses are so clear. And then we go back, even if it's mentally potentially going, uh oh, how is he gonna react? And you're gonna have that two frame, maybe three frame moment of, oh, like, holy crap, what is gonna happen to me? And again, you're, you're almost expecting then a big take, a bigger reaction, but we cut off that expectation and that, that, or that finish with, Cut to black in the sound. I think that could be also a, a potentially more effective way of milking that moment and the end. So, I mean, that's, again, very subjective. My general view in terms of staging and timing and how we could milk potentially certain moments. So let me take a look at just the, uh, the technical aspect of the animation. So for that, let me just turn off the sound because let's just go one more time. Is there anything with the sound? I love that. It's also fun that you added the <laughs> It's a great sound effects fully and everything you added in there. And I love that the, the sound, the music stops to reveal the lightsaber. Yeah, it's great. I mean, this is overall such great work with the animation, but also the music choice and the sound effects. Very, very cool. I want to turn off the sound, that being said, and look at the animation. So like I said at the beginning, potentially, just to milk things, but you do have that, which is cool. You might potentially arc it a bit more or have that type of thing. I think I'm always a big proponent of not using one axis, and that's why I love that your hat does this and then settles and, and adjusts itself. So it's not just hat up and down, especially not the same axis. So uh, any type of involvement of all axes in... Rotation and translation, I think, is always very cool. It doesn't have to be massive, but it just adds a cool touch of complexity and polish. That being said, polish, you might argue when that hand comes up and the hand comes down, it might just be posed down a little bit of spreading of the fingers, potentially. Probably where I would definitely do it, and it's pretend you don't do it there, is at the beginning, you can see the fingers don't react at all to that move. So to me, this would be a tightening and tensing of the fingers. Like he has that on the on the shelf, but nice getting ready would be maybe holding on to pull himself over, to push off for that jump. So I think that would be either flattening, but I think it would be more of a, the things like this and go, and like a tightening, a more tense post change. That would definitely change. This feels too broken up into just an IK arm that doesn't react at all. I do like this, that then you have the hand dragging there, but this would be something I would consider. I don't think there's enough time for a facial change, but you could argue that on here, maybe up here, you widen the eyes just a bit more to get a bit more of white. Like it's kind of like, <gasps> like, a, huh? like it's a little more of ha ha, where 
that overshoot and everything is almost reflected in the eyes and eyebrows. Not that you want to do an eyebrow up and drag and overshoot, but potentially just be interesting to see in terms of polish if you widen those eyes and see more of the whites and then it settles into that look. Also on something like this, you could anticipate that move with maybe two frames early, the fingers. So it's like this and then the fingers tense because he's getting ready. It's almost like a, a visual inhale and tensing before he moves. So the fingers animation, whenever you have post changes, could be anticipated, right? So it could be that and then the character moves. Even if it's just one frame, this would be like very, very subtle polish. But I think that could be something you can explore. And again, I mean, it feels like he is squinting more. And this could be something, again, could, you could explore where actually it's the opposite, where the eyes widen as if the brows drag getting into this would be kind of fun because as you do this like even this could be maybe exaggerated where it's like one eye is bigger then you're like, like go full on into pirate mode just to kind of push the asymmetry of the face and kind of a, a crazier face even this asymmetry watch out for that like i don't mind this being here but this could be a moment of uh, again Imagine you don't change any of this. You don't go into my crazy notes. But this would be this. You hold. Although this looks like he's looking at me. I would potentially push those pupils. It's a bit more here. And gives us one more pupil here. It feels a bit isolated. We kind of lose that pupil. I would bring that over here. And then, again, the eyes may be a bit wider. So that when you do this, instead of just the body moving... You would have maybe two frames of eyebrows going down into a squint for this. I know I'm jumping ahead in terms of the notes, but it's already there. And because it's awesome and I love all the stuff you do here, as you do this, the the beard would tuck in. Because you have this and it goes in and it pulls the beard in. It would be kind of fun to, with shapes, do something where you can feel that drag and getting low in there. Do you have animation here? I mean, you have a drag and a bit of a wiggle, which is... Eh, part of the jaw, but not that you want this to be all flowy, but you can potentially push that a bit more. But anyway, let's go back here. I'm way back at the beginning. Love this, though. I love that the hat drags without falling off. Maybe it has a, a band or something. I don't know. But I like that stuff where you go like, wait a minute. The hat should fall off. But then it doesn't. Like, I love stuff like that. It always cracks me up. This is great, though. I'm a big fan of smear frames. And it's also the hand is doing a massive big move. So it's understandable that that's your frame there. I think that's pretty good. I feel like there's a slight dip in the arc in the terms of the body where this would be a projected arc. And then you're suddenly lower where the body would be kind of here. That's the only thing to be super picky. Does it matter in real time? Let's see. Not really. Now that I look at it, I see it. But, I mean, upon first viewing, I didn't notice it. There's always something where, you know, is it something that technically you can complain about? But is it necessary for the shot? Probably not. But, again, you're initiating an arc with something like this. And probably by now, that body, that line here would be up here. And so it feels like you're suddenly going down and shortening that arc. So maybe your wall would end up being here. I mean, you can also just shorten those branches and just if you don't want to hide that roll too much. But again, this is very picky. So you can watch out for that. Other than that, I think your arcs are okay. Again, picky. It feels like you're initiating the foot up here. And then once you're here, let me do this here. You know, you have your, your shoe till here. And then this happens. There's a slight feel of this. Where again, you might... Just work a bit more on those arcs. Again, did it matter upon first viewing? I didn't notice it because I was it just the overall actions cracked me up. But as you want to go in potentially with some polish, this could be something. Same thing with maybe at this point you're you're tucking in that arm with the hook a bit higher to prepare for that roll, or you go a bit lower, meaning that you don't have an overlap between the two. You might want to work on that silhouette where Again, maybe that hand is lower, this is higher, or that hand is actually higher and the um, the hook is lower because this is the arm of the action that's more nimble 
and there's more weight on this maybe because of the material of this and maybe that will make more sense to have that arm higher but that one bends with the hook here so a couple of things to to potentially think about but there is a slight feeling that everything gives us an energy you know momentum that lasts only till here and suddenly it's kind of it kind of dies and deflates towards the end there this is super picky by the way just because just because I can. Because <laughs> I'm not the one potentially fixing it or animating it. It's always very easy to give critique and suggest all those things. But again, I love the drag. I love the smear. All that is very cool. Love movement on the on the tree. Set pieces moving are cute. I mean, potentially, again, I'm going to be super picky where you would separate this. Maybe the base is less. This is moving a lot more. These guys would move separately. Copy, paste, copy, paste with offsets. But it's the tree, he hits the tree, and it's the tree that moves, and then the tree will affect the base a bit less, right? So you have more movement here, less movement there. Be super picky. Then we have this, which again is a, is a different thing of you're introducing the finger first, which is really funny, and then the face. Potentially, you know, could be fun to explore what I said before, face, then fingers, but also giving us a bigger surprise because we are expecting an entry here and maybe the entry from off screen into frame in front of the tree would be potential stronger surprise. It might help you with the timing just because he has to travel more. He is going to be faster and visually you're going to have that, that speed increase, that ramp up of energy. But anyway, let's look at what you have. So you got a clean silhouette with this, you have a clean silhouette with that. I still feel like you could potentially push the face a bit more. You have nice up and out on the head. It's cool. It's not just one pose. It's, it's really nice. You have ambient movement in here. And it comes together into that, into a cleaner, nicer pose. But I like that it's separated. Then you have somewhere to go, right? You have contrast between this and this. This overall movement in here, which is cool. And I see it here. It's very nice. A lot of great attention to detail there. You could potentially start like this with the fingers. Again, this is insanely picky, but it would be interesting to explore that on this, you actually get into a full extension on that finger, that it starts to get, 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 get. again, you ramp up and you ramp up the energy level with the fingers doing get, 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 and getting stronger and having more of that. It's also fairly cheated where it's a train in the background here. I'm just watching the fingers where, you know, you rest. I know this is a cheat because if you watch this, it's fine. Like it has that feeling of if you're really looking at it, your finger is sliding. So it could be interesting to explore this. And then on this frame, the finger is here and then it's bent. And then the next finger comes out. So there's a chance that the distance you're traveling is way too far for these tiny fingers, meaning that the fingers would be so fast that it would be so stroby that we lose the effect and the humor. So I understand why you have frames of sliding travel. But it could be interesting to explore how far you can push this until we reach the strobing effect, where it's... And it might just be, again, like I said, um, extending the fingers more, and that will give you a faster uh, timing or faster look and ramp up of energy, but I would look for that. This was cool. I like that the book is actually... Affected by it. I like your exit here. <gasps> I think the other reason why I I had the impression of him hiding is because of the timing where you have this, right? You got the, the mass here, the object. And then, especially with this frame, that's a big frame of change. Meaning you have this silhouette, right? You look at, at the overall red. It's fairly small of a change. It's a bit bigger. But I like how there's a drag. And then you got this. It's a big frame change. And there's a, just a visual mass of red. And that's the big one. And then we have a little this. So it's not a complete pop. And I think because of that, this feels like he is initiating that. He he has that the, the speed of it. By that, I mean, if someone does something and then falls, there comes a point where you're not in control of your movement anymore. You're... Uh, you're maybe you might be walking tripping and then it becomes physics where it's just that and then fall now that can be pushed and stylized where it's and faster but you have to be careful that there comes a point where 
when the speed is so fast, when you would expect just a bit more hang time and a drop, even if it's stylized, when you make that so fast that it's it, it, it's it's a point where it becomes voluntary, if that makes sense, where I'm deciding how fast I'm falling down. So it's it feels less like I tripped and fell, but it's I'm I want to go down fast because I want to hide. And maybe that's what I felt when I saw this and I didn't quite get the whole thing moment of tripping potentially this is what i said before is this because imagine he's completely in shambles legs and everything and he's kind of uh, he gets back into oh let me get back into this this is this is how i interpret that moment i'm not quite sure if that's really the case there again like i said before watch out it has a feel of just looking at me and i think i will get eyes on the prize and potentially a bit wider to then frown was also the the frown and squinty aspect is that he goes huh and then the frown is like a an overall tensing of the body where okay i gotta get back into that moving myself forward and that energy and that you know the effort tensing of the of the muscles which we don't see it's it's kind of like the eyes squinting are the the visual representation of him straining and using more effort if that makes sense it's not only for contrast would i go wide and then squinty, but also because of a physical aspect of it. Not as very nerdy, but I would potentially do that. This would be fun again with that turn that the beard is a bit lagging in this. I actually really like that we don't see any movement in the arms and legs. Watch this. <laughs> it's basically the character just magically sliding forward. I love that. Sometimes you don't have to be literal and make it all you know, clean or physically possible and mechanics working. I just love that. The pushing of... Now, this is all cool. Watch out again for your spacing. There is a slight... Let me go back into this here. Nose is here. Nose is here, roughly, right? For the middle. Kind of. It's very dirty. But look at this. There's a slight feel of... Again, I'm further to the right just for silhouette, but it feels like this is what's happening as opposed to potentially this. So watch out your spacing. Turn this off. It feels like we're hitting that imaginary wall boom, and go straight up. So I think we can work a bit more on that arc and the playfulness of it. I do love this. It's great. It's also nicely played in front of the red. Again, the silhouette, it, you can't always have an out of the body silhouette if that makes sense right so you have a silhouette in terms of negative space here sometimes you don't have room but i think you're playing this really nicely in terms of color so there's a nice color silhouette there i like that i like your widening of eyes everything goes ah oh, goes into this i think this is great this is a great moment of anticipation into this super picky you would probably put in geometry and however you want to constrain it or wrap deform to uh, make this, you know, the color of the suit so we don't have intersections there. And then there was a pop in your hair at the end there, right there. Boop. This is, again, very picky polish stuff. And I know it's just always tricky when you don't have time. Would also be fun to animate these guys a little bit. But by them, I mean the earrings. Super picky. But I think as a moment, this works really well. And again, you might want to cheat potentially the shape of the nose or the orientation of the head to be more like this. See how we see the pupils nicely? And here we're getting to a point of mm, it's a bit too cut off. And I wish we could tweak that. So either you move. I mean, he's looking slightly over here. You know what I mean? You might have to also adjust this where you're rotating Y more looking here, maybe even lower with the head. But that will give us always a nice view of the pupil, even by moving away from it for the dissipation. I think that could still work. Love that. Turns into a pizza slice, but I love this. It's great. Again, if you have time, right? Let's pretend. Let's pretend you're insane and if you're going back into the shot and changing all the things that I mentioned. Even if you keep what you have, but taking some frames out to make this the same timing, faster and even faster through here. 
those stolen frames could be put here where I feel like, watch this. What if you have this and then a moment of just maybe two, three frames of almost no movement for that. I feel like, again, it feels like it's there's always something moving. And I think we could potentially cheat that moment a bit more of a pause for effect. I wonder this is extremely picky if I would reduce this smear and not go as high. Just because the red visually, my eyes, I see a lot of red here, right? If I'm gonna, let's go really dirty and crazy. So where is my, there you go. So you have your arm here. I see stuff here. I see stuff here. I see stuff here. And then down here. Why am I saying this? It just feels like as we're watching this, again, upon first viewing, I didn't catch this, but and I don't know if it's it's not wrong per se, but I feel a lot of the red is here, and this is almost a bit too long. I don't mind a smear frame, but maybe it's just a bit more like this, like the tip is maybe here, and doesn't go higher. If you watch this now, now that you, this is me pushing the wrong buttons, I'm changing uh, the, the onion skinning. So if we watch this, once you see this, I feel like I'm really seeing that shape. And I wonder if it's a bit lower, it will be a bit cleaner in terms of smear. That's super picky. I could be totally wrong. I do love the cookie though. That's all cute. Then we're here. I love all the change in the beard, little wiggles. Now. How far do you go? I mean, you do bring the cookie closer. It would be interesting to explore. Let me backtrack again. This, remember when I said, oh, maybe do this and not flatten out so quickly? By doing that, you're going to cover the roll more. And I said, yeah, well, maybe just shorten the tree, move the whole tree over even potentially, right? So that this base is here. You have many options of making this a bit more, you know, whatever here. What that would do at the end is that if this tree is a bit further here, right, it gives us a nicer silhouette. It's a bit busy here. You have a lot of color change or at least, you know, the grays. And it could be cleaner where I feel like, like this would be nicer without this down here. If that makes sense, right? As you go, and this will resolve uh, or end up in a, in a moment of a cleaner silhouette. Now, does that mean that you can only go maybe this far? That might be too too stiff. Like with that big swing, you might want to go this far. Or maybe split the difference between here and here. It could just be maybe here. And maybe by moving the tree, like I said before, could help you with that. But that's one thing. I feel like it's a bit of a bummer. It's a bit busy. But this is all cool. Ah, I like the tongue. Watch out. Eye on the prize, really make sure it looks here. And you have a nice lifting of an eyebrow. I would probably go with both a bit stronger. I feel like this, it's mostly one, it's a bit isolated there. I think it's pretty cool. But again, I would probably also lift this up a bit more. As you scrub, you can see how it's really just pivoting off of here and that line stays put there. See, as you scrub, it maybe would be nice to do instead of. Oh, where's my arm? <laughs> Instead of uh, like that, it'd be a little bit of a, uh, an up, if that makes sense, right? So that this line is actually here. But that's all cool. I like that it'll take there and that look, and then we end there. And this goes back to what I said before. What if the gun barrel comes in and makes him just look over, maybe just with eyes, a little bit of a head turn, and <sighs> right when he's done eating. And like I said before, and then that motivates the camera to move over because right now it's him reacting out of nowhere you're doing it well by panning over quickly so we don't go like what is he doing it's it goes straight into the gag but this would be interesting to explore at least at least to me subjectively of doing this more of a an interrupted action by having this come into frame we're going what is this and then that mimics his face what is this and then we reveal and then it's done like I said, it's could be fun potentially with a two frame. 
It's almost like you have a sound effect of ah, like a little higher pitched. You would think him going har, 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 like a, little, uh, a deeper voice, like a Santa Claus uh, pirate ho 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 deeper voice. Har. And then maybe the fun thing would be of a higher pitch ah, before the cut. Again, it's totally adding so much more work. Uh, picky picky note. I don't know what this is. This looks like a locator. I don't see any other objects in the scene. So I'm not sure what that is. And like I said before, potentially pushing his line of action and silhouette to be a bit more energy driven. It was a bit stiff there. But again, maybe, you know, it's an old guy, it's an old dad, maybe not as energetic as the kid. So maybe, maybe that couldn't work. But I will personally push this a bit more and change the color a bit. I feel like his upper body really disappears into that gray background. I see something here too. I don't know what that is. This seems Maya related because I don't see the line here. So I don't know if that's, again, whatever you have here in the scene, just keep it clean. And explore potentially some breathing and keep alive, maybe. I mean, it totally works already, right? You have this. Let's bring the sound back. And the only reason why I'm saying this is because we linger enough, right? Watch this. See this? Like by now-ish. What is this? For me, let's go back up here. For me, this is frame uh, 252, right? As I go over, um, I feel like we get to that point and there's... It's enough of a linger where nothing happens. And maybe this could be the moment of him squinting with a slight smile. And then that leads to him going, ah! You mean like this is, in a, this is a reaction that prompts this reaction? Um, do we need it? I think it's totally successful without it. You know what I mean? I can, you can noodle a shot to death of adding all kinds of stuff. And it will be too much, too busy. And this was, upon first viewing, like 100% uh, successful with this, the surprise... And then the sound at the end is great. So I'm just here to give you my uh, very subjective two cents of what could we do? What could we explore to make this potentially a bit funnier? Also super picky, your ear, that lower part of the ear is right where that bat is, forming a tension right there. So either bring that a bit higher or the bat a bit lower. If you go lower, you might get too close here. So I would probably bring it a bit higher so it intersects uh, or visually goes through half of the ear uh, to avoid that tension there. Uh, and I think that's it. What is this now? I'm rambling now for 47 minutes. I think I have bored you long enough with my crazy notes. Yes, I think that's it. I would say... Yeah, the ending is great. Love the sound effects. And especially ending with a big smack before the cut. I think sound-wise, sound design-wise, this is very smart and very cool and effective. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's it.